Blossoming friendships are a beautiful thing. Hey everyone, welcome to Prince the Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are here with my blind reaction to episode four? Episode four of Carol and the End of the World. So last time, we uh, we have our friend group starting. Carol is making friends at work and like actually connecting with them outside of just, you know, very brief interaction based on doing the work, whatever this empty work is and we get to see a bit of their personality learn a little bit about them and it was admittedly a little confusing because there was a lot of dream sequence stuff in the episode so it's hard to tell everything that was real and everything that was part of the dreams but I think most of the gist you still get it and you really start to see that these bonds are forming and might possibly even stick around if this job thing falls through. And the end of the episode gave us a little hint at something to come. There's some other character who's seems like they're going to be getting involved with this in some way. I, I, I don't know. But we still haven't checked back in with uh, the guy from the first episode again. We saw him like I, I briefly during episode two at the beginning, I think. And we saw his son again. Um, but we haven't seen him really since all of that went down. So it's going to be interesting to see like where that plot line goes as well once that's reintroduced into things. But... For the time being, uh, we're not going to waste any more time. We're just going to get into this, hope for the best, and see what this episode has in store for us. So, let's do so. Cutting in here real quick to remind you of all the awesome content we have on the channel. Between Monday and Friday, we have a plethora of awesome series reactions with two on Wednesday. We also have movie reactions every Saturday and Sunday. I do pre-record them during the week, but upload them on the weekend. And don't forget about the gaming stuff on the Princess of Gaming channel. We have Baldur's Gate 3 every single day, Horizon Forbidden West every Monday and Friday. Tuesdays and Thursdays is Life is Strange Double Exposure. Wednesdays and Sundays is Beyond Two Souls. And Saturdays we have Near Automata. Don't forget to click the link in the description to get to today's video. I do redirect everything just due to copyright reasons. And please, Subscribe to the channel and like this video if you want to see more awesome content such as this. But thank you so much, as always, for tuning in. Let's get to today's reaction. And we are back and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So, this show continues to impress in ways that I really didn't expect in ways that I, I didn't even necessarily hope for, but have come to realize that in a way I almost needed. <laughs> um, and I feel like the, the best way to explain is that after I stopped recording, I had like, this is gonna sound weird, but bear with me. The driest cry I think I've ever had. Like, barely any tears actually falling, but I'm sitting I'm sitting here with like my face and my hands like practically weeping. Just without much of any tears falling. Don't ask me how that works. But I'm I'm sitting here weeping because of how beautiful this episode was. Like, I'm a sibling. I have a sister. I have a brother, too, but uh, <laughs> not entirely relevant to this at the moment. Um, just more for comparison's sake with, with my sister and everything. It's like, we're very different. Um, I tend to be um, a lot more quiet and shy, but I'm also... And extrovert. I like to go out and do stuff with people. 
I like to have social interaction, etc. I'm just very shy and quiet about it. My sister can actually hold conversations, communicate easier, but she's an introvert. She doesn't like to do that stuff. She would rather sit at home playing video games and drinking coffee. And even our tastes in certain things are different. Um, my sister's really big into games like Resident Evil and Cyberpunk and whatnot. While I like uh, Life is Strange and uh, Sandland and all. And we have some things that, of course, like go between us. We both like Legend of Zelda. Um, we're, we're both uh, fans of Baldur's Gate, etc., etc. Um, we both have similar tastes in music. But we're also still pretty different. And so this episode did hit a little bit because of that. Um, mind you, it's not as extreme of a difference as Carol and Elena here, but still. It's made very clear throughout this episode that Carol and Elena, like both look up to each other, they both care about each other greatly, but that they've never, like, throughout their entire lives, been good at communicating with each other. Carol is, like, is a lot like me in some ways. Very timid, very shy, very, like, reserved. Doesn't talk a lot, doesn't know how to communicate her feelings very well. I, I do see a lot of myself in Carol. Which is part of why I like her character so much. While Elena is a lot more of the uh, wild child archetype. She's, she, she likes to do all this crazy stuff. Uh, go on all these adventures. Try out all these new things. And it's not really driven a wedge between them. But caused, like, misunderstandings and, again, just an inability to properly understand each other. Because of this, they've always felt a little separated. So now, after having um, talked about Carol and spoken her up uh, while in Spain and told her new friends there that it's like she looks up to her and everything she decides to go back and that's what this episode is we see carol and elena trying to bond and they both put forth effort and they both mess up like carol shuts herself out she tries to like sh shut other people out from herself rather and isn't very good at communicating her feelings or what she wants or needs at any given time. And again, just like with the timidness, I very much connect with that. I have a hard time with that myself. And Elena... Elena doesn't know how to communicate with her specifically. She's good at communication generally, but... And at the same time, she's, she's so outgoing and, like, boisterous that it comes across as intimidating to Carol. And the constant filming things for posterity, like, really throws Carol off because because of her timidness because it feels it, it almost it, it, like she said in the episode it kind of feels like she's being mocked it feels like she's being like put on presentation rather than being seen as a person and elena doesn't understand that because this is how she's lived her entire life she's done all this adventurous stuff and she starts to realize, as it goes along, that Carol's not the only one having troubles here. 
that she's messing up too. And so you see that part where it's like, oh, in the morning after after they had that fight and everything, Carol comes out of the tent and Elena's like, can we talk? And after that point, everything seems to start to get a lot better for them. They get they get into a much better place emotionally. They're able to communicate better. Carol starts to open up a little more and Elena's less abrasive because they talked. And we don't get to see that talk. We don't get to even hear it. We don't know exactly what's said, but based on the context clues throughout the rest of the episode and throughout the other clips we see from the from the footage, we can guess that like they came to an understanding. That they both expressed themselves and expressed their feelings on all of this and probably finally got to tell each other what they've always needed to just about who they are and like how they need to communicate because both of them have different needs for that and it allows carol to to really find some solace in this Reconnecting with a sister that she's never really had a chance or ability to connect with in the first place. Like, it, it makes, it's made very clear how much that actually did mean to Carol by the end. And it shows that it meant, honestly, maybe even more to Elena. Who, again, seemed like she always had it all together and all, like, really well. Uh, going down throughout her life uh, since everything we've known about her. But I, I, I'm sorry. I think I just made no sense there. I hope you understood what I said. Um, she feel, It feels like she's always had everything put together. Like her entire life has been just a smooth sail, a, a great ride. But there's it, this has been her one biggest regret. Like, they even talk about their regrets, and it's not something she brings up, but it's very clearly her biggest one. And so at the end, when you see her, like, cross out Spain on the tape and write Carol, it shows it's, like, what's really important to her. All this adventure, all this excitement, it's, it's something she likes, but it's, it's basically a coping mechanism. It's like the working for Carol. It's her way of dealing with her emotions, her feelings, her her life. And instead, she realizes what's truly, like, really important to her is her sister, who she adores. She adores her. She looks up to her. She sees her as, like, inspirational. And that's beautiful. And yeah, there's going to be hardships, there's going to be troubles, there's going to be miscommunication and inability to communicate. But every close bond comes with stuff like that. There's no such thing as a perfect relationship because perfection's an unattainable goal as it is. It's not about finding perfection, it's about getting through all the rough spots together. And coming out stronger because of it. It's about being there for each other when things go bad. Or when, like, you know, arguments or issues arise. That's what being in a relationship, no matter what kind, whether it's a sibling relationship, a romantic relationship, a friendship, doesn't matter. Whatever kind, that's what it's about. And it's just, it's, it's a beautiful episode that's kind of basically found footage style, but, you know, just not, like, actually someone found this footage of people who are dead now or something like that. Um, and it's, it's just, it's beautifully handled. It's extremely beautifully handled, and you get so much depth with these characters in it. 
the, the show just continues to impress, and I can't wait to see where it goes next. So thank you so much for tuning in. I, I don't really have much else to say. I know, not too long of afterthoughts, but tell me your thoughts down below. And for now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.